Hi, this is Dr. John Bennett from uh, Miami Beach, Florida, home of Neurosurgical TV. We are graced with the presence of uh, Atul Goel, a master teacher in neurosurgery, and you'll see what I mean if you watch him. Uh, he's going to talk about epidermis today, and uh, we'll start right off. Welcome, Atul, and thank you. Thank you, John, and thank you all the participants. <clears throat> because we have time today, so I like to go slow. And I want to be more beautiful because epidermoids are slow growing, beautiful tumors of the body, of the brain. Epidermoids grow slowly over several years and uh, they are called pearl like tumors. Obviously, these pearls are beautiful tumors. But I must tell you that these are not so beautiful. Now you will ask me why they are not beautiful. And I will like to why they are not beautiful. Maybe more beautiful people are more dangerous people. They are, you know, one of the most Thanks tumor, if you would like to call them thankless tumors, because they present with very marginal symptoms, very few symptoms. They present when the tumor has actually grown in the corners of the brain, corners of the blood vessels. They have encased the blood vessels. They have gone from this side to that side of the brain. And symptoms are very marginal. When the symptoms are marginal, the neurosurgeons are faced with a bigger challenge. So you have a tumor which is here and there and everywhere with marginal symptoms. So you are not supposed to harm the person and you are supposed to treat him. So it is a difficult situation for me. So let me discuss with you this unusual tumors, relatively rare tumors. But I must say I have got a very good association with these tumors for several years. And without any doubt, I can say that my experience with epidermoids is largest in the world by far. And I will show you. So as I mentioned to you yesterday, brain is nothing but sunken skin. Brain is originated from the epidermal or epidermal layer, and then it sinks in like neuroectoderm. It turns in, it makes a groove, and then these grooves develop into brain. So brain is nothing but sunken skin. And this statement is such a wonderful statement to make but it is actually true. And when the brain sinks in, the epidermis also sinks along with the brain. So brain is neuroectodermal, ectoderm is epidermal, and this is how epidermal tumors involve the brain. So what are the characters of epidermoid tumors? So these are some beautiful sentences I have made up for you. They proliferate slowly to acquire bulk over several years through discrete silence. So you, they will be silent for a long period of time and they acquire that bulk by growing slowly and proliferating slowly over several years. And even when they show up by virtue of the symptoms, these symptoms are very marginal or here and there. So they can be called gentle manly tumors. 
but whether they are really gentlemanly that you have to see for yourself. So wherever there is space in the brain, they grow into that space. And that is their character. So space in the brain is in the subarachnoid systems, in the region of the ambient systems, in the region of supracellular systems, in the region of interhemispheric systems, around the region of the tentorium, above and below the tentorium. So more often, these tumors, the space is more pronounced in the region of the tentorium and in front of the brainstem and anterolateral to the brainstem in the CP angle cistern, in the cerebellum medullary cistern, in the cerebellum midbrain cistern. These are the cisterns where there is tumors, where there is space in life, and these are the, this is the space where these tumors grow. I made one sentence in one of my lectures that these are like Mumbai slums. Wherever there are space, the slums show up. Similarly, these tumors find space and they grow up in that space. Epidermoid tumors, neural crest cells are migrant cells. These cells are sitting on the fence. They are neither neural, neither clearly ectoderm, but a bit of both of these tumors. And if you want to go in more of these kind of philosophical issues, you must read one of my papers, and that paper is, I had written one editorial, The Heuristics of Craniospinal Epidermoid Tumors. You must read this paper. I will say it is a beautiful paper that you will love to read. So these tumors can grow in the sylvian fissure like this. And here they can be involving all the arteries of the sylvian fissure. And you know, there are several arteries. So they may be beautiful looking, but because they are beautiful, these arteries get hold of them very intensely and very intimately. And this is the relationship where that can be disturbing to the surgeon. Because any single artery, if you take any single artery, if you damage, you can create a very big deficit. The most important issue in these cases, surgery-wise, that these are absolutely benign tumors. They have there's some beautiful characters like softness and amenability to suction and all those things are there. But you take one vessel, you demolish the person. So this is the sylvian fissure region A. Uh, epidermoid tumors. Now you see this is another huge tumor. You can imagine the internal carotid artery, the bifurcation, the basal artery, the contralateral internal carotid artery. And when this patient comes and you see the subarachnoid spaces are very prominent. This is not a tight brain. The patient has hardly any symptoms, maybe a little bit of ataxia here and there. And this poses a very big challenge. That is why I say this surgery on these tumors is quite a thankless job because all you can do is harm him because the symptoms in any case are not prominent. And damaging the patient is a big possibility by damaging the arteries of the circle of villis. You take one perforator, you completely damage and kill the person. They are in front of the basilar artery, behind the basilar artery, front of middle cerebral artery, behind the cere middle cerebral artery. They are around the pituitary stalk. They are all over. The symptoms are extremely marginal. This is another huge epidermoid tumor. And you see these tumors have been traditionally called CP angle epidermoid but I will show you that I have completely demolished 
this name or nomenclature of this epidermoid because these are not CP angle epidermoids. These are under the tentorium and I have labeled them as tentorial based epidermoid tumors because they not only go in the CP angle system, they go into the cerebellomedullary system, cerebellum midbrain system, and then in the ambient system, and then in the supratentorial compartment. This is another supracellar, if you want to call it supracellar epidermoid tumor, and you see the relationship with basal artery, relationship with internal carotid artery, more important is not in this case, but it can go in front of the basilar, behind the basilar. It essentially means that the perforators are traversing through the tumor, perforators are traversing through the tumor, and very intimate kind of relationship that this beautiful tumor develops. And that is what makes the surgery on these tumors a little bit difficult. I will not say these are difficult surgical issues, but can create some issues during surgery. This is another tumor. So I'm taking you to the world of epidermoid tumors. And I want you to enjoy this world of epidermoids. So this is the tumor on both sides of the fox. And you see how the tissues are displaced in here and there and everywhere as if they are running away from the tumor. This is another tumor on both sides of the fox, intimate relationship. I do not know what the symptoms were at the time of presentation, but I can tell you the symptoms may be extremely marginal, maybe a convulsion, maybe some kind of headache, maybe a little bit of ataxia, but essentially the symptoms are quite marginal and ignorable. This is another huge tumor. You see how these tumors go from here and there and everywhere. Pineal region system, posterior third ventricular system, epidermoid are relatively common. I will say ambient system or tentorial based systems, tentorial based epidermoids are the most common. And next to that is pineal region epidermoid is next common. And then there is falcine, inter, interhemispheric falcine tumors are the commoner. Then supracellular epidermoid tumors are common. Now I want to show you this beautiful slide. Carefully see this. This is pineal region epidermoid tumor. Carefully see this slide. And if you see this slide, the brainstem has been bifurcated into two components. And even with this bifurcation of this tumor into two components, the symptoms may be very, very marginal, maybe some ataxia here and there. And now the question posed before you is to remove this tumor. One thing you must remember that this is an absolutely benign tumor. It is not a malignancy. It is a tumor which learns to live with the patient in a very symbiotic fashion. They learn to accept each other for a long period of time before one of the partners become a little bit weird and starts disturbing the other partner. Intraventricular epidermoids are extremely rare epidermoids, but they can be present in the ventricular cavity. <clears throat> Intraparenchymal epidermoid tumors are quite rare, and I will say quite extremely rare. Intrafourth ventricular tumors, I will say they are rare, but they are not extremely rare. In my experience over the last 35, 40 years, I must have seen about, maybe about 15 to 16 fourth ventricular epidermoid tumor. I have written a paper on this subject also. Epidermoids can be small epidermoids when they present with symptom of trigeminal neuralgia, which is a very common symptomatic presentation of epidermoid tumor with hemifacial spasm with trigeminal neuralgia. I will say trigeminal neuralgia is one very common symptom of presentation 
Earlier in our days, we used to get this information that trigeminal neuralgia is diagnosed by virtue of symptoms. There is no need to do any investigation, but trigeminal neuralgia is quite frequently a presentation of epidermoid tumors and hemifacial spasm. These tumors are so benign and so long-standing that they can be the whole life they can never present and you can identify them in postmortem examination for some other reason you have done postmortem examination and you find epidermoid tumor in a postmortem specimen and i have actually got epidermoid tumor when i was doing some cadaveric dissections so epidermoid tumor is sometimes quite discreetly silent tumor, gentle manly tumor throughout the life without disturbing the host. Sometimes they can be present with some other tumors like I had reported several years ago in the presence of epidermoid tumor in presence of some other tumor. So this was in presence of, uh, these are, there are two tumors here. Progressive hearing loss, diplopia, right hemiparesis, magnetic MRI shows, lateral pontine enhancing tumor with CP angle epidermoid. So two tumors in proximity. I do not remember what the other tumor was. Maybe a glamour, maybe interaxial tumor, maybe some kind of uh, other tumor. But there are two tumors here and I had we had reported a collision tumor. So they can be in collision, and this is actually a post-operative image where the tumor has been dissected. So they can be huge. You see, these tumors can be huge, and they can go in every nook and corner, but they have some special surgical, you know, they give way in a special way, which I will show you. So this is another huge tumor. In my world of epidermoid tumor, you can imagine I will say this is quite a straightforward surgical problem. Another space which is not very common occupied by epidermoid tumor is cavernous sinus. You see it's cavernous sinus is a CSF cistern with metal scale. So it can occupy the space of cavernous sinus. This is a beautiful tumor. You see this is cavernous sinus part and like a trigeminal neuronoma. I was showing you the other day, trigeminal neurinoma. Similarly, exactly same anatomy between the dural spaces of the trigeminal nerve. And this is in the posterior cranial fossa. <coughs> of course, here it will be in the subarachnoid space. So this is like a trigeminal neurinoma. So we had reported this giant multi-compartment epidermoid cyst of the cavernous sinus. This one multi-compartment like a trigeminal neurinoma. This is another tumor where I had recently demonstrated this by surgery from here to London in a course organized by George Samanduras in London where we were supposed to operate in our own country and show it in London. So I demonstrated two cavernous sinus tumors in that course from here in one course and in the other course, I demonstrated five cases. I am not sure if any one of the panelists had attended that course, but this is one tumor I have shown live. And there were several participants sitting in London where I had done, a, I had opened the cavernous sinus to remove this tumor and this is post-operative image. Intracavernous location of epidermoid tumors is a relatively rare location. This is that case again, which I'm showing you, intracavernous like epidermoid, and this is post-operative image showing the tumor resection. This is another case of intradural, interdural cavernous sinus of the epidermoid tumor. This is the tumor in the cavernous sinus, and this is post-operative, you see, how the interdural resection has been done inside the cavernous sinus, this location is relatively rare. I had another huge case like massive trigeminal neurinoma 
massive interdural cavernous sinus tumor, epidermoid tumor, and you can see the erosion of the temporal brain. This is another case. You see this is inside the metal scave and in the cerebellopontine angle. And I don't like to call that cerebellopontine angle tumor. And you will know very soon why, because I like to call them tentorial based epidermoid tumor, because these are based on the tentorium and then they go above the tentorium and below the tentorium in proximity to the brain stem and then in proximity to the basilar artery and to the proximity of other very important cranial nerves in this vicinity of this tumor. This is another tumor in the tentorium based epidermoid tumor. Now sometime I showed you yesterday that this can be very similar dermal tumor is endodermal tumor which can be exactly in front of the brainstem. The imaging features are discrete but sometimes these imaging features can be similar to an epidermoid tumor. They have soft calcification basilar artery is in very close proximity to these tumors. They are relatively very straightforward tumor because the content of the tumor is like fluid and like you can easily suck away that fluid. This is another endodermal tumor. I showed you that these are rare tumors but they can be simulating epidermoid tumor. I had reported seven cases before that time. Now I have about 32, 33 cases of these endodermal tumors. They are dark on T2, bright on T1. Just open the capsule with a very small exposure, evacuate the cyst content and then remove the wall as much as possible and this is the post-operative image. And the patient recovers quite dramatically. Another dermal tumor is teratoma, which can be quite common tumor, not very common, but, but a tumor in the pineal region. More commonly, these tumors, teratoma are identified. And of course, teratomas can be anywhere in the body, but more common in this region. This is another beautiful tumor that I have actually reported. And you see, this is a tumor like a beautiful shellfish tumor, I like to call it, and this tumor we had reported. This is another huge epidermoid tumor. So I'm taking you to my world. This is a dermoid and ruptured dermoid. You see this ruptured material inside the subarachnoid spaces of the brain. Ruptured dermoid is a common tumor of the, of the brain. And when it is ruptured dermoid, it is the contents are like epidermoid tumor, but they are quite, the capsule is very thin and that is why it dis disseminates into the brain. You don't have to remove this tumor, you have to remove the bulk of the tumor here. So imagine this was my experience till 2008, about 12 years ago after that, I have never written on this subject. And if I collect, you see 135 cases, so very big experience even at that time. Now, of course, in the next 12 years, my experience is quite a huge and no question, largest experience in the world on these tumors. Now let us go on the surgical issues of these tumors. Surgical issues is that one is, we must know ourselves very clearly and very definitively that these are very, very benign tumors of the body. They have very slow growth. When they come to us or when they are diagnosed, many of the times they come with very large sized tumors. Symptoms are quite marginal. They have an invasive, invasive pattern of growth. Symptoms are very subtle and they are located in critical location of the brain. So these are the issues that we must remember.
Okay. Well, everyone knows the fire drill. This there's an outage in the area. Is oh, yes, okay. John. It popped right back. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Carry on. So these tumors are slow growing, benign tumors, large size, invasive in nature, subtle in symptoms, critical in location. So the more important thing is, you have to remove the content of the tumor, that is one thing. Second thing is you have to remove the wall of the tumor. The wall of the tumor is actually the main culprit, which gives which give the tumor arises from the wall, epidermal wall, epidermoid. But the wall of tumor is, can be a little bit more dangerous to remove. So remove that wall as much as possible, more aggressively, but you cannot compromise any single, the bottom line is you cannot compromise on any single perforator or any single nerve. More importantly, suppose you damage the sixth nerve the patient will be never happy. So it is a thankless operation, difficult operation at times, and a thankless operation. Frequently, these tumors can be quite incidental. Sometimes they will be associated with collision tumors. And I like to call them anterior tentorial based epidermoid tumors. And if you see this slide, I wish you can you can see this article of mine in the year 2006. And I must tell you, I know the panel is sitting here and I can tell you that this article is a revolutionary article in the subject of epidermoid tumors, revolutionary. You will ask me why. And I have to answer this tumor because these tumors are not CP angle tumors. These tumors go up above the tentorium, below the tentorium, and along the tentorium. They are never actually only CP angle. They are in the cerebellum medullary fissure, in the cerebellum midbrain fissure, and they go above the tentorium in the region. And if you know that they are along the tentorium, then you can most astounding approach is supracerebellar approach to these tumors. And I have done several tumors of this, this kind, supracerebellar. And the most intimate relationship of this tumor is with trigeminal nerve. And I have even speculated the trigeminal nerve relationship with these tumors, why the trigeminal is associated with epidermoid tumor. In, in this article I had mentioned, that because it supplies the skin, maybe some kind of a relationship with origin. Supracerebellar, first time in the literature we described that CP angle is not the approach for this tumor. Supracerebellar is the approach for this tumor. Then you debulk the tumor, debulk the tumor because they have special character. You debulk the tumor, then you cut the tentorium and go above the tentorium. So then you remove this tumor. Once you get a space, then you come in the CP angle in the vicinity of the cranial nerves. Most dangerous cranial nerve in this tumor is the sixth cranial nerve. And that cranial nerve you have to protect. And that is the main cranial nerve that will be a troublesome cranial nerve for you because that cranial nerve has to be preserved. And this is post-operative scan. If you damage the sixth nerve, you have damaged this person. That is one thing that you can damage. If you damage any perforator in the vicinity of the basilar artery, you have damaged the person. You cannot damage anything. And that is a challenge for the surgeon. So I will like you to read this beautiful article of mine. This was the largest series at that time. And of course, this was 15 years ago. And now in the 15 years, I have got a very further, very big experience. And at that time, my experience with pineal region tumors, epidermoid was also the largest in the world. 30, 24 cases. 
So on the strength of my experience, I am going to give you my presentation and I will give you, because I know many young residents are sitting, I will give you a message as to how to remove these tumors. So these tumors can frequently be present themselves with, a, with trigeminal neuralgia, hemifacial spasms and things like that. And this tumor, this is preoperative tumor. You imagine the relationship with the brain stem. Imagine the relationship with various structures around the vicinity, basilar artery going in this region in the temporal brain. So I have told you that this tumor should never be removed from the CP angle. The cranial nerves are displaced laterally by these tumors. The best shot on this tumor is supracerebellar, and this was a revolutionary article of mine. These tumors are based on the tentorium. They go into all the kinds of fissures that you have heard of, and more importantly, they go in front of, in above the tentorium, a large component of this tumor. They encase the basilar artery. The perforators traverse through the tumors. Cranial nerve, sixth nerve is in the vicinity of the tumor. Fifth cranial nerve is more often displaced laterally by the tumor. Seventh and eighth cranial nerves are displaced laterally by the tumor. So super... <clears throat> that is why I like to say That is why I was saying that this, uh, this paper of mine is a revolution in the field of epidermoid tumors. And you have to say, you have to accept that. And also I have to warn you that for some time between 6.20 to 6.30, my video will, my internet connection will disappear because I don't know why, but this time they don't like me to work but I will show you as much as I can show you. Very rarely these tumors can be associated with some calcification. These calcification are extremely rare, basilar artery encased tumor. Tumor above the tentorium, below the tentorium in all the fissures that you have heard of. You see this preoperative image of this tumor, you see, and this is postoperative image, you see the various vessels within the confines of the tumor. This is another tumor, I think you have seen this. This is another huge tumor above the tentorium, below the tentorium. Huge tumors have been my forte because many of the, our patients particularly Okay, we may be frozen here. Just hang in there. Yes, my dear friends, again, I'm back. So many of the tumors that I have seen are quite huge. You see 10 centimeter anteroposterior diameter, this, that. So fantastic experience when I had reported this material. So many of these tumors are in younger population after 40, they are quite less. Males are more frequently affected. 
duration of symptoms are subtle, small symptoms, marginal symptoms, marginal headache, marginal giddiness, marginal attacks here for a long period of time. So many patients present with more than five year experience uh, symptoms, two years, five years. So that is the kind. So let me discuss with you tentorium based epidermoids which is a new terminology that I had given and I have no question that there is no other terminology for these tumors. If you call them CP angle epidermoids, it is a wrong terminology. Tentorium based epidermoid tumors, the fifth nerve is maximally displaced laterally. Seventh and eighth cranial nerves and ninth cranial nerves are displaced laterally. Sixth nerve is usually displaced inferiorly. You see, these are there is no fixed character of this tumor. They can be displaced in any kind of direction. But in general, they will be displaced in this kind. They can go into cerebellar brainstem fissures, the membranes. They will very rarely, extremely rarely go into the substance of the brain. Arachnoid membrane is intact. They can be anterior to the brainstem. More importantly, they are above and below the tentorium in almost all cases. So, You know what, John? Yeah. It gives the panelists some time to relax from this high power philosophical kind of. So you just relax, okay? If there are some interferences, just ignore them. So headache is quite a common symptom, gait disturbance, facial numbness, vertigo is a very common symptom. Diplopia, trigeminal neuralgia is a symptom, hemifacial spasm, Getting temperamental today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, back and forth to the internet. Okay, so the symptoms are quite varied. More important is these symptoms are long standing and these symptoms are subtle, not very intense symptoms. So now, when we are asked to operate these tumors, what are your good points? And what are your bad points? So one is that these tumors are very soft and suckable tumors. The brain is quite lax. It is not a tight brain. So these are good for the surgeon. Negative points for the surgeon are that the distortion are quite intense. Brain and cranial nerves and blood vessels are markedly distorted. They can encase the major vessels and perforator and this compartmental nature is another very big issue. Now I would like to show you some surgical cases. Now, my surgery for tentorial based epidermoid, I divide them into three stages. First stage is always, always supracerebellar revolution in the field of epidermoid surgery, supracerebellar. Second stage is cut the tentorium if necessary, then go supratentorial. And the third stage is resect the part in the CP angle. Hmm. 
It's worse than usual today. Okay, gentlemen, the most important and critical nerve in this situation is the bilateral sixth nerve along the clivus, and of course the third nerve along the tentorium are very critical nerves, and more important is that if you want to save this person, you have to save each and every perforator from the basilar artery, which can be quite furiously intimately related to various structures in the vicinity of the brainstem and this is post-operative scan. This is another tumor you see it is above the tentorium, below the tentorium in every nook and corner and you have to be aggressive in your surgery. You can you have to come in the supracerebellar, remove the tumor, soft tumor, debulk the tumor. I will show you one video very soon and then you have to cut the tentorium, go above, you have to reach the pituitary stalk. Sometimes you can see the chiasma, you can see the internal carotid artery. And I'm going to show you one case which is completely unedited tape. I'm going to show you for at least half an hour, so be prepared. And I don't want to edit that tape to show you the removal of the tumor in all nooks and corners. So this is preoperative. You see how it is going and this is post-operatively the tumor is removed. Now, other thing which I want to tell the young people very, very clearly, complete tumor resection is important. Removal of the wall is important, but that is not your trophy. What is your trophy is to preserve the patient intact because there are many critical structures in the vicinity of your surgical trajectory vicinity of the tumor, softness of the tumor allows you to remove these tumors, but you are not allowed to damage any single vessel or perforator or cranial nerve. That is why I say these tumors are quite thankless operation, but these are beautiful operation on a beautiful tumor. And that is beautiful tumor is epidermoid tumor. So this is the tumor of a different kind where you have to come in this direction this is post-operative. So many of these tumors are in the ambient cistern. Many of the tumors are, the surgical direction has to be supracerebellar. It is only rarely that you have to come from the sylvian fissure, from the tyrional approach, like in this case, where the tumor has been removed from the basal subtemporal approach. This is pre-operative and post-operative image. This is another tumor pre-operative and post-operative image. Tumor has been resected quite beautifully. This is another pre-operative and post-operative image. So this is pre-operative and post-operative. This is the tumor. Let me, John, I would like to show one full length video, full length surgery. Okay, John, are you ready? Yeah. So can you get me off the screen? Yeah, okay, second. And there will be no editing that you must remember. No, no, wait. Yeah, yeah, diffusion weighted is the most important uh, image. What we will do is let me first show you John, get me. Ah, okay, okay. Just a minute. Just a minute, please.
Oh, we fell off there. Get the video, John. No, you didn't share the video. Yeah, open the video, then then share it. There's no sound. Is the video is, on? Yeah, is there yeah. any any sound on it or no? John, this video is on. Yes. Think. You can see it, right, Dr. Dr. Well. Okay. Uh, can you see that, John? I can yes. see. Yes. I cannot hear you, John. Oh, you can't. You can't hear me. Can anybody else hear me? Can, can you hear, you hear me, John? Hear yeah, I can hear you. I can hear you. The, the video is on. We are seeing it. Yeah, we're seeing the video, and you are. Oh, I can. We can hear okay, your can voice. Okay. You, can you hear me? John? Yes, yes. Okay. Okay, so this is the this is the transfer sinus. This is some mastoid air cells. I'm so this is the transfer sinus. Here is the sigmoid sinus sinus quite widely. Can you see that transverse sinus? Here is the sigmoid sinus. And this is the cerebellum, little bit wider exposure. And marking the dural incision, as you can see. My dual incision is in the form of two traps so that I can work in the supracerebellar compartment and in the retrosigmoid compartment. And I am going to show you largely an unedited version. Maybe I'll show a little bit editing here. Okay, so now here, I am going supracerebellar. Now you see the fifth nerve is directly in my view here. And if you can imagine, if you see, there is, there is tumor medial to the fifth nerve. So first thing is to take the petrosal vein very early in the operation. Because if you don't take the petrosal vein, you cannot retract the cerebellum properly. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to take the petrosal vein early in the operation so that I can retract the cerebellum. You must remember this is completely unedited version of this case. So it may not be like what you see in various uh, where there is editing of the tape. So what I've done is I have cut the petrosal vein. I'm going supracerebellar. I'm seeing the tumor medial to the laterally displaced fifth nerve. This is the fifth nerve. I'm taking the petrosal vein. 
because that is important step of this operation. Then you see, you have to now see that this beautiful pearly tumor is right there and you have to break into the tumor. The good points is the brain is not tight at all. You have to open the cisterna magna initially to relax the brain and then you have to break the tumor. You see, I am breaking the tumor. Breaking the tumor, breaking the tumor. You see, this is a soft tumor. That is the beauty of this tumor. That makes this tumor very, very, uh, I will not say easy tumor. There is no tumor easy in neurosurgery. This is the fifth, fifth cranial nerve. Then I'm breaking this huge tumor, which is going everywhere. It is encasing the arteries and I may not be able to even label the nerves for you. Just imagine what is going on and what is not going on. Imagine. Oh, we're getting too lucky there. I will little bit open the voice also here. During that workshop was questions you can, you will be happy to hear the questions that were asked during that time. This is a workshop. This is, there were about 200 participants in that workshop. So can you hear the voice, uh, John? Uh, we can't just think, I can't understand it. I can hear it. No, nope. but, but voice of the, uh, my operation voice. No, I because we can't, no, we did not. We hear the, my operation voice. No, we don't hear the intraoperative voice. It could be a bandwidth issue. You can hear the voice vaguely. Voice is okay, John? We don't hear the interoperative voice. You don't hear? No. Okay, so you then I will go on uh, maybe just talking. Yeah, you can comment on, on, on it. So I'm just breaking the tumor. You see this tumor, I am holding tumor. You see, I am breaking the tumor and above the dome of, and you see the brain is relaxed, supracerebellar approach. You, did you get that approach, the most beautiful, astounding approach described for tentorial based epidermoid tumors? You see now there is brainstem here and this is completely unedited version of the tape. You must remember this. And above the dome of the tumor, there is the third nerve. I am breaking the tumor with my suction. I will say, if you ask me whether bipolar will come in picture, no, bipolar will never come in the vicinity of the surgery because if bipolar has come, means you have made a very big technical error. That error can be quite devastating for the patient. It means you have taken some big... This uh, operation was 
demonstrated in front of 200 people and such workshops I conduct on a regular basis and the participants I will like to invite. It is my open invitation to the participants to come and join one of these workshops. And I promise you, I will never leave you disappointed. That is my promise to you. Now I'm removing the tumor along the tentorium With the help of my suction, I am breaking the tumor. You cannot hear the voice of my suction, unfortunately. But try to imagine it. Try to imagine and find the voice of the small. Now I am trying to remove the tumor above the tentorium. More often than not, I will cut the tentorium. In majority of cases, even in this case, I think I will cut the tentorium at a later stage because the part of the tumor above the tentorium cannot be accessed. You see, these are relatively easy tumor to operate otherwise. You have to use your suction in a very, very fantastic manner. You learn to operate with your suction. The tumor is a very, very fantastic tumor to operate. This has come in picture. You must remember my exposure is supracerebellar. My entire exposure is supracerebellar. And now I am seeing right in the region of the hypothalamus, pituitary stock will be here, pituitary gland will be here, posterior clinoid process will be here. This is the posterior cerebral artery. Earlier used to never complain about big things. Yeah. You must remember that this is unedited version, so there is some time. I don't know why time is being spent here. But these things. Maybe I go a little further. Bare necessities of life. You see, this is the third nerve. See, you can use an endoscope sometimes to use, but it is not usually, it is better to cut the tentorium. Protect the fourth nerve and cut the tentorium.
Whoop. Hello. He'll be back. Can you see the pituitary stock here? This is the hypothalamus pituitary stock. And you see, this is the this is the view from the supracerebellar. You can see, you know, depending on the anatomy of the tumor, you can see the various structures. Let us see how far this has gone. I don't remember what this case was and how much was removed, but just this was in the workshop. Now this retrosigmoid exposure, you see, I have come retrosigmoid for a long time, that thing. I am breaking the tumor with my suction. You see supracerebellar approach. This is retrosigmoid now here a little bit. Sixth nerve is going to be the most important nerve. So we have to protect the sixth nerve in this area. <clears throat> that is, the, this is the fifth nerve here. Sixth nerve is going to be here somewhere. This is, this is the third nerve there. Dr. Goel? Hello, Dr. Goel. Just enjoy the dissection, my dear friends. This is a, you see, now, now you see here, I am going from the supracerebellar approach to the internal carotid artery is there. You just keep a watch here on the internal carotid artery. This is the fifth nerve, this is the third nerve. This is the internal carotid artery. This is the opposite optic nerve, opposite side. See, this can be removed, it look, gives you a very easy this is the hypothalamus that you see here. Pituitary stock is here. Here is the clinoid process and supracellular area, pituitary stock. This is the region of the trigeminal metal scale. This is completely supracerebellar and retrosigmoid combined. Initial was supracerebral. I hope you are enjoying young participants. This is epidermoid. These are the world of epidermoid tumors. So as I have already told you, I have got a very, very fantastic experience on these tumors in my lifetime. Um, Professor Goel, there is a question from someone here. He's asking if you do use lumbar drain or ventricular drain. Did you hear that, Dr. Goel? See, the brain is lax in this situation. 
that is the advantage the tumor is soft but problem is this intimacy of the relationship with the structures you see here how intimately it is associated with the cranial nerves That is the sixth nerve underneath here. Sixth nerve. This is the fourth nerve, third nerve. Pecom artery, posterior. Pecom and posterior cerebral artery then will come. This is the pecom on the other side here. This is the internal carotid artery. See, because you know, this tumor was operated several, some time ago, I don't, See, this is the sixth nerve, and I am protecting the sixth nerve. It is the most important thing to protect the sixth nerve, as I have mentioned. You see, your handling, your handling of the tumor cannot, you know, it looks very good, but you can damage the person very bad. The bottom line of this operation is you have to remove this tumor as radically as possible. This is the fifth nerve. You see how fifth nerve is displaced towards you? This is the large fifth nerve. So you have to remove the capsule, but that does not mean See, I am breaking this epidermoid tumor. This is the large fifth nerve. Here is the seventh, eighth nerve complex. The most important thing is you cannot damage anything. As long as you are sure that you are not damaging anything, you can continue with your operation. As soon as you identify that, oh, there can be some damage by my dissection, you have to necessarily stop. See, here is the sixth nerve here. See the sixth nerve is here. You see here is the basilar artery if you, so most of the tumors will be of this, this kind of consistency. And here is the basilar artery, you see? Most important thing which I'm trying to show you is my exposure. And as I mentioned to you, supracerebellar approach to these epidermoids, which I like to call tentorium-based epidermoid, is one of the most revolutionary approach to these tumors. And there is, you should not have any doubt about it. If, it's, if this tumor comes your way, you have to, you have to, without any question, you have to do this way. Now you see I'm dissecting in that area.
Hello, Dr. Goel. I think we're going to have to wrap it up uh, soon. Dr. Goel? <laughs> Hi, Dr. Goel. I think we may need to end this broadcast because we have the Jordan Neurosurgery Grand Rounds. I'd like to have Dr. Goel continue his golden education, but today the tech doesn't seem to be cooperating. So, yeah. Does anybody have any comments? Uh, so, uh, yeah, John, um, it's just about the question on um, lumbar drain. I don't, um, I don't use or prescribe lumbar drain that the tumor is usually soft, is suckable, and it is white, uh, very distinct from the brain. And therefore, if you use manitol, it will suffice. Um, you, just, you just get into the tumor. The moment you start sucking, like you said, you don't particularly need bipolar. The moment you start sucking the tumor, uh, most of the brain will relax. Then you have more space for maneuver. OK. Thank you. Okay, I wish Dr. Atul was here. Anybody have any comments on what uh, that Dr. Kanu had to say? Okay. Okay, well, uh, I'm going to end this broadcast because we have to go over to the Jordan. Dr. Sabea, I have to set up for that. So thanks, everyone, for coming. Sorry about te technical problems. It's worse today than usual. And I think uh, Dr. Kenu, yes, huh? go ahead. Yes, we John. have to go. Yes. Yeah, we just hold on for two, three minutes. Let him come back and then we'll end it. Okay, okay, okay. I think we, he's trying to come yeah, back. Yeah, we have to end it pretty soon because I got another webcast. Okay, fine. So we just give it a few minutes and yeah, then. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay. You have to pamper the star player. John, are you there? Yes, I am. Okay, it, it appears uh, Professor Goel is not responding. Well, uh, his associate, Dr. Abby, Abby has mentioned that he's coming back in a few minutes. So I'm going to wait a few okay. minutes. Wait a few minutes, and if he doesn't come back, I have to go to Jordan. <laughs> yeah, this is, okay. the, this is the usual. This is yeah it's this unusually probably... yeah it's unusually bad today right yeah and this is the one that one this is the long one that always goes i think 
Okay. Well, maybe we can continue tomorrow. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry about that. Dr. Well, Dr. Wells coming in there. Let me explain. Yeah, this, we can yeah. let him in. Yeah. Thank you to Professor Goel. Uh, we appreciate everyone. Thank you. Dr. Goel, are you there? Yeah, yeah, I'm there, John. Sorry for all this kind of things that are happening. But okay, now you are with me, John? Yes, uh, I have to go shortly. We have another conference soon. So how much time do you have? Uh, we already went over, but five minutes? Uh, is that okay? Okay, okay. To, to so wrap it up, to wrap it up. So just let us wrap it up. Up till now, it was completely unedited, but now I will maybe let me edit here. We'll make it 10 minutes. 10 minutes, okay. Yeah. Now you see how I'm handling the cranial nerves. You have to be absolutely sure that your handling is not going to damage the person. If you are not sure, you cannot do. That is the bottom line, you see. And this, this uh, handling will depend on your experience with these things. See, this is quite a mega tumor. Many of these tumors can become very huge. They go here and there and everywhere. See, now this is retrosigmoid. This was supracerebellar. Most important is in this operation, there is no role for any kind of coagulation. These are the lower cranial nerves here. Yeah. See, I'm breaking the tumor with my suction. This, this art of breaking the tumor will have to be learned. Unfortunately, there is no shortcut to it. Gentle suction, gentle. Little bit I have edited because John has to run away. See? See what a huge tumor that you are seeing. It enters into all the symptoms are very subtle and minor. Duration of symptom is very long. <coughs> the tumor is going along the tentorium right in the ambient system. This is the brain stem here now. Supracerebellar approach, that is the key word in this operation. Yes. 
difference between the acoustic and this? There is no blood to irrigate the earth. <laughs> now you see this is almost the end of the operation I think and you see the anatomy, this is the, see the cranial nerves you see here, right from the hypoglossal nerve is here. You imagine the supra, you imagine the supracerebellar approach. And here is the internal carotid artery on the other side. Denturium has been cut here. Okay, now what I'll do is I'll just rapidly show some slides. John, your slides are there with you? Yes. Okay. So this is the supracerebellar approach. I don't know whether this was the tumor I was showing. I am not sure. But this is post-operative of some other tumor maybe. And you can see the anatomy seen from here in the other side. The hypothalamus, the pituitary stalk, the internal carotid artery, and the tumor has been quite radically removed. See, more than radical removal of the tumor, it is the preservation of all nerves. It is the preservation of all blood vessels. So you can use, I had described contralateral approach to hemispheric tumor long time ago. And then I had described for meningiomas, for interaxial tumors. I had even described for in, interhemispheric AVM. You come, get these arteries first, and that's these veins later, this approach I had described. But you know what, Some, this medial temporal epidermoid tumor, which is completely in the middle fossa, I had removed by lateral supracerebellar transtentorial approach. So this was the first article in the literature which showed resection of a supratentorial tumor by a posterior cranial fossa approach. Now, why I use this approach, there must be some special features in this tumor. Subsequently, if you've seen, this was in 2010, then there were many other papers written about removal of this uh, cavernoma, this approach, and epilepsy surgery from this approach, but this was the first article on this subject. Pineal region tumors have their own characters. And of course, today I don't have time to show you, but this is a pineal region tumor. You see beautiful anatomy. You can see from here, from supracerebellar approach, the nose of the patient also can be seen. Of course, not the nose, but the entire territory fornices and velum interpositum and things like that. Beautiful supracerebellar approach for these tumors. This is another epidermoid in this, and this is a huge tumor, which has you can imagine the anatomy that must have been seen. This is air in the territory. You see the whole tumor from this territory. A beautiful anatomical demonstration of this tumor. Supracellar epidermoid is another cup, another wonderful. And these have higher recurrence rate, the supracellar epidermoid tumors, and these, the arteries of the circle of village has to be preserved in great perfection. This is supracellar epidermoid tumor, and I had one tumor, which the tumor had become carcinomatous. Squamous cell carcinoma developed in form of a collision tumor, so this was 
very rare case that I had reported. So thank you, ladies and gentlemen. And I hope you enjoyed a brief presentation on the world of epidermoid tumors. And I will be happy if you have some wonderful questions for me. Well, I may have to cut you short there, Doc. I'm, I'm going to go. <laughs> okay. No, no <laughs> problem. No maybe, problem. Maybe, maybe tomorrow we can get to them. But are you lecturing tomorrow? Okay. Yes, I will give you my title soon. Okay, great. And if I have some problem, then I will see. I will get a another speaker for you. Okay. But let me. There are some questions, and I will answer them tomorrow, John. Okay, excellent. And thank you very much, okay. John. Thank you. Unfortunately, it was a little disturbed presentation. Thank you very much. John. That's okay. Bye. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye. Okay,